Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we welcome you to monitor your health. This is the first ep uh, edition or the first episode. Today, we will be discussing uh, cervical cancer. And I have in in house with us um, Dr. Ajayi, who is a gynecologist, uh, who will be answering all our questions today. Just before I introduce him, can I just tell you a little bit about Monitor Your Health? Monitor Your Health is a public uh, enlightenment uh, program where we meet uh, our patients with their needs, needs around questions and things that bother them around their health. So we want to welcome you today. Dr. Sandy Ajayi, thank you for joining us today. We welcome you. Can you please introduce yourself? Okay, thank you, Dr. Gurami. Um, so you already said my name, I'm Dr. Sandy Ajayi. I'm, um, I work as a consultant, uh, obstetrician and gynecologist at uh, University Hospital of Mokombe NHS Trust in um, Cumbria, UK. And um, I, I have a special interest in office gynecology that involves uh, hysteroscopy and coposcopy, uh, and also minimal access surgery uh, and also medical education. So it's a pleasure being with you. It's a pleasure uh, coming uh, uh, this evening on Monitor Your Health. And I hope that we're going to have a wonderful uh, educative uh, discussion this evening. Thank you so much. So to our viewers, we've had a lot about, you know, cervical cancer. Today, our intention is for us to be able to, you know, to connect with you and be able to answer your questions under the comment section, if you have any question around this topic, please just uh, list them. We will try as much as possible to trash them at the end of the program. Dr. Ajayi, we've had a lot around, you know, cervical cancer. We tried to, today we went out, uh, which I'm going to play some of the captions that we picked earlier on. We tried to find out from our people what they understand about cervical cancer. It's actually mind-boggling to discover that out of about 15 or 20 people that we ask, only one person actually understand what cervical cancer is. Before I do the, uh, before I play the, that uh, caption, can you please tell us what is cervical cancer? Okay, thank you, Dr. Gurami. So cervical cancer is a cancer um, that uh, is involving, that affects the cervix, that's the neck of the womb. And um, it, uh, commonly caused by the uh, HPV virus, that's the human papilloma virus. So we have different subtypes, uh, almost 100, but the one that, that causes uh, cervical cancer, the one is the subtype uh, 16, 18, um, 31, and uh, 45. Uh, so for, each, for there to be cervical cancer, uh, there has to be prior uh, infection with HPV. And uh, the way, um, and, as, and the way we find out is true, uh, if a woman presents with some symptoms uh, or true, uh, if, if a woman has had a cervical screen, then that, that can show some abdom abnormality with the cervical screen. Then for the examination in the clinic with coposcopy, will that with biopsy, we then, uh, we then make a diagnosis of uh, cervical cancer. So we do know, one thing we know is that is majority of cervical cancer is caused by uh, HPV virus. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So HPV virus is the human papilloma virus. So this yes. is the virus we're talking about. So it's a bug, basically. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a virus in that sense, yes. Isn't that quite strange? Because we, we, we know cancer to be something that, when, when, when our people hear the word cancer, they, it's quite frightening. It's a big thing. With majority of our viewers at home will have known somebody who probably died from cancer or suffers from cancer. So cancer can be infectious. Uh, it, it, <laughs> thank you, this is, the, 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 this, this like cancer is quite uh, unique in that sense because for that type of cancer, um, like uh, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, um, endometrial cancer, they, there's a lot of uh, um, multifactorial, there's a lot of um, um, factors that can cause such, such cancers. But we do know that with cervical cancer, we do know that the, the causative, the majority of uh, cervical cancer is caused by HPV. So that has been established uh, from, from studies. 
Okay. So um, for our viewers, what the doctor, you can see what the doctor is saying. There's an infection that actually is completely linked to this particular cancer. And then we're going to hear more about, about this. Um, so if an individual has this HPV, the human papilloma virus, Dr. Ajayi, it means that the person already is on the way developing cancer, or does it mean that you have the virus, then you have the cancer? Okay, what happens is that with, uh, so HPV is, uh, so people get in contact uh, with HPV through uh, sexual intercourse. Okay. So that's, that's the way uh, people are, people are most majority of the contact through sexual intercourse. And for the majority of people, nine out of 10 women, if they have the HPV, their body immune system actually clears the virus. So it doesn't cause any problem for majority. So it's just the, uh, the uh, some percentage of women that then the HPV now causes the, some abnormality uh, on the cervix. So we do know the history of, uh, so for there to be cervical cancer is a, is, a, is a process. So there's the HPV infection, which leads to uh, pre-malignant changes. So those are the abnormal changes on the cervix. Um, and then it is, it is not found out or it's not, it is not treated. Then over a long period of time, uh, we're talking about uh, 10, 15 years, then that can then progress to cervical cancer. So we know the history, we know the causative organism and then the, the history uh, uh, to then for, that, for there to be then the development of um, cervical cancer. Okay, so it takes about 10 years. If somebody has an infection, then the infection, you know, like we're being told now, Majority of the people that will have the infection, maybe did you say ninety percent? About yeah, yeah, about 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 a lot of it is being cleared off uh, naturally. So people people just uh, 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 clear off the infection without having any problems at all. Okay, so one out of ten of the people that have that will have this infection will actually come down with the cancer in the long end. If it's okay. not, yeah, if it's if it's not found out, and if it's not uh, then uh, uh, treated at the early at the uh, pre malignant stage, then that would be the that would be the natural cause of events. Right. Are there any other thing that uh, our viewers need to actually watch out for uh, in terms of what they do that will prevent them from having this, you know, uh, cancer apart from the infection? Okay. So in terms of uh, in terms of, in terms of risk factors. So things like uh, if, if you smoke, then uh, it will increase your risk of having uh, HPV, and then that can lead to uh, cervical cancer. Also, the use of um, oral contraceptive pills can also increase that uh, the risk of, uh, of, of, of um, having uh, HPV. And then also people who have got weak immune system, like if somebody has got uh, HIV, unfortunately, that weakens the immune system so that the, the process of uh, fighting up the virus is not efficient. So if you got the HPV and then also that person has got the HIV, then that process is not as good. Then the the body, the, then the HPV can progress and cause abnormality um, on the uh, uh, of the cervix. And also, if somebody has got uh, multiple sexual partners, there's a there's also some suggestion about uh, maybe early age at which somebody had as as had their intercourse. So, and um, even multiple pregnancies, although those are very Less, less important um, uh, risk factors, but do, do, those are all the uh, risk factors linked um, to the development of uh, uh, to, uh, of cervical cancer. Um, so, so those, so those are the risk factors, really. So, what, what, what we're saying here, for for the benefit of our viewers, is there are things that we do or that can expose us to this particular cancer. So, we've talked about people that smoke. People that have multiple sexual partner. We'll talk about people that use, you know, oral contraceptive pills, and people that have multiple uh, uh, pregnancy. And also, we're talking about things that will reduce immunity. When anything that compromises or that reduces your immunity also uh, will lead to this. So, uh, one thing that the doctor said, which I really want us to dig a bit into, I know that smoking is not common around this part of the world. <laughs> Uh, well, where, where I mean Nigeria, I know you're in the UK. You know, uh, in this part of the world, the majority of our viewers today are actually uh, in Nigeria. We know that smoking is not common here, but how, if I may ask, how does smoking, how does it lead to? Because 
it sounds like if you smoke, then your chance of you of having um, HPV infection is higher. Can you throw a little bit more light into that? Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Gurami. I think the the link with uh, of smoking and HPV is that uh, I think there's something that's that's got to do with the smoking. The way uh, it it brings down it affects the, the immune system in a in a subtle way, in which case you are not able to handle the you are not able to handle the virus. Uh, compared to non-smokers. So mm. assuming that the HPV has been there, but if you mm. then if you are then a smoker, then your body immune system is not as robust compared to a non-smoker to uh, build up a fight against uh, the uh, the virus. So I think that's that is the link really. And then when, okay. when we see them in clinic, when we see patients in clinic, we normally advise them. So we take their we take their history, whether they smoke or not. And one of the things that we tell them that they can change, what, what, one of the things they can change is if they stop smoking, then uh, hopefully that, that would then help in, the, in, the, in uh, their immune system. So that's the link. Okay. So skin basically also affects the immunity in terms yeah. of its effect on the, on the skin. Okay. Thank you. And then um, we know that cancer, majority of the cancer, their family, you know, their family are in nature. So people say that you have your sister your brother has they have cancer uh but here we're hearing that a lot of associated factors here including an infection what is the role of genetics or you know our family line in when it comes to cervical cancer okay when it comes to cervical cancer uh, genetics has has got i would say has got no role really because like i mentioned before majority it just that i, I can't say i can't say 100 percent because I mean, there's nothing absolute in medicine, but we do know that it is, uh, it, it, for all the samples, for all the, uh, all the papers that I've, that I've read and all the uh, information out there has, uh, um, has shown that there's a direct link with HP, between HPV and the development of uh, cervical cancer. So if you don't have HPV, um, is on, you're not likely to have cervical cancer. So there's no there's 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 no role of genetics in cervical cancer at all, which is very interesting because a lot of the cancer uh, we we hear clearly that oh you have cancer of this so the the, the chance are that uh, I mean your family member has this then it increases the risk so what we're hearing today is when it comes to gen to to cervical cancer there is no role uh, for genetics in terms of you know uh developing this cancer of importance is the infection which is a sexually transmitted table infection uh which we talk about the hpv virus uh it's just a bug hpv virus as it sounds so big is just a bug that people can you know uh can can, can get through sexual inter unprotected sexual intercourse uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ajayi. I think at this at this juncture, I'm just going to I'm just going to share my screen, and I want us to capture and see what are people, you know, what they've been saying about, uh, um, you know, cervical cancer. We've been out there, so I will share my screen uh, just to, for you to have a look at this. Okay. Uh, Interlude. Okay. So let's go here, and we share. Right. Oh, sorry. That's a, that's the um, Okay. My name is Adeto. I'm from Monitor Healthcare Limited. What's your name, please? My name is Okpayemi. Hi, Miss Okpayemi. How's been your day? Fine. No, we thank God. Okay. This is a voice popular session for cervical cancer screening. Have you heard of cervical cancer before? No, I never hear. What do you mean? Are you serious? Yes. Okay. Um, if you would like to know what cervical cancer is and everything that revolves around it, kindly log in to Facebook tomorrow by 6 p.m. at Monitor Healthcare Limited, and everything you need to know will definitely be solved by an expert. Is that fine? Are you Are you free tomorrow? Be like so. Now let that that be the problem. All right then. No problem. We'll be expecting you. Bye. Thank okay. You. Thank you for your time. So that's our first. Uh, that's our first. Um, uh, patients to record it. So let's listen to the second one. Interesting. Go into the treatment. Now. So I just want to ask you a few questions. If you know what cervical cancer is, if you heard about it before, I need to hear that before. If you know what cervical means, 
Saraka has only cancelled. Saraka Kanta has only cancelled out the state. Just like they will have this cancer. Also, has a cancer out of the state. And this, uh, this disease can be prevented and treated. So that's what we've been discussing today by this day and this day. We have been doing so to come to talk to us without this virus. And this thing can be is it only female? Also, support male. For several factors, it's female because cancer is the only thing that has sex. So, yes, it's only female. And by 6 pm, you can follow us on our Facebook page, monitor us getting sick. Today, you can ask questions about this disease. Yes, you can come online. Okay, so, and the doctor is teaching us about this. Right. I'm just going to go back to that. Uh, that's the. Uh, that's the. Uh, uh, yeah. so that, that's what. That's what our people are saying about you know cervical cancer. It's quite interesting because. I talk about you know you know the number of people that we actually interview. Only one person actually understands what cervical cancer is. So now that we've we've thrown a bit of light into the understanding, and I, I, I mean the, the the meaning of 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 cervical cancer. I hope our viewers in the house may I, I I want to believe that you you you're gaining from this uh, presentation. Now we want to go into. Um, the int some interesting part of this, uh, you know, discussion. We know that so far, cervical cancer is heavily or strongly linked to an infection called hemapapilloma virus. The doctor has talked about the possibility of treating this virus or treating this cancer. Usually, when we hear about cancer, we believe it's like a death sentence, like you can never cure it. Is there a cure? Uh, for, for, for cervical cancer. Okay, thank you. I think we, before we come to that, uh, should, should we discuss some aspect of the symptoms? Uh, because, I mean, this is what the patient we will, we will, will present with, isn't it? So uh, to our women out there, um, I think uh, in the early stage of uh, development of abnormality of the cervix or cervical cancer, um, at times, very, in the very, very early stage, there can, there can be no symptoms. Women will just be fine. Um, and then if he, because, and also if there's been no, um, um, maybe there's no regular uh, cervical screening program where the person is, then it's difficult to pick out some of the abnormality. Um, we have a privilege advantage in the UK because we have the NHS cervical screening program and uh, running since 1988. So that's fantastic. And it has actually reduced the, uh, the, 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 the incidence of cervical cancer. So, so like I was saying, there can be no symptoms in the initial initial stage, early stage. But more commonly, a woman may present with bleeding during or after intercourse, that's post bleeding. Also, they, they could have pain during intercourse. Um, and so these are the, and also abnormal discharge uh, in the absence of any infection. So that those are the early uh, signs, uh, symptoms in the early stages. In the late stages, which we might commonly see uh, in in the play, uh, in the rural areas in Nigeria or uh, in uh, in low uh, resource country, in which patients are presenting very late. So they might present with loss of appetite, they might present with weight loss, uh, fatigue, pelvic pain, uh, very heavy vaginal ble bleeding, um, and also they could have fractures uh, if there's um, if there's metastasis into the bones, and also there could be uh, uh, fecal and urinary incontinence if the cancer has, uh, has spread to the blood and to the rectum. So those are the uh, kind of presentation that uh, uh, women can present with uh, either in the primary care or in the secondary care. Uh, so that's so those are things that we can look out for. Um, so so those are the common uh, uh, symptoms to, to, to look out for. Thank you so much. So I mean, what, what, what the doctor is telling us here is there are certain things that we need to be looking out for to protect, or at least uh, if for people that will have uh, this cancer at a very early stage, there are things that can come up that you will, you know, as soon as you see those signs, you need to see your own doctors 
uh, like he talked about, uh, you know, whether you're having pain when you're having sex, you're bleeding, on uh, abnormal bleeding from, from the vagina, abnormal infection when there's no need for that. Um, sometimes in a very, very in, in bad or late stage, you can have feces coming out in the wrong uh, part of the body. So there are things that you need to, 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 to be on the lookout for. Thank you so much. So um, now we, we know the symptoms. Is there a way that we can actually prevent this? Yes. Um, so the, 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 the prevention um, aspect is about, um, so we talked about, part of what we're doing is about the prevention, part of uh, empowering our women, health, that's health awareness, education, and um, uh, health promotion. We said that this is very key, uh, particularly in, a, in, 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 a, in Nigeria, because uh, uh, at the moment, we don't still have the we don't have the, uh, the national um, health, uh, cervical screening program yet. So women need to be empowered. Women need to know what to watch out for, and then they should report to their uh, to their doctors as soon as they pick one of those symptoms. Uh, so, and then talking about the HPV vaccine, that's one that's that's one of the preventive uh, measures for cervical cancer because if you can give the HPV vaccine early before um, a woman get exposed to the HPV. So it builds up the immunity. And then hopefully down the line, uh, that will prevent them having the HPV infection leading to development of abnormality that leading to cervical cancer. Also the um, regular cervical screening. Uh, this has been very, very effective in the UK, like I mentioned before. At the moment, uh, we don't have a national screening program in Nigeria, but I know that there are clinics out there that do um, opportunistic uh, cervical screening. So uh, at the moment, uh, we, we just have to make do with that. Um, also using condoms um, can also prevent um, getting in contact with HPV. Um, and also it also prevents or uh, getting other sexually transmitted infection. So that's a double protection from that point of view. And we always advocate uh, safe sex practice uh, avoiding uh, multiple sexual partners. So that is very, very important in, in prevention of uh, cervical cancer. Thank you so much. So now we know, we, know, we know what cervical cancer is. We know the signs and the symptoms of it. We know how we can prevent ourselves from it. Let's say we've gone past this stage and unfortunately somebody has developed this cancer. Okay. What, is, what can be done? Okay, what can be done? So, uh, essentially, so the, so it could have, so the, the the this could be that patient referred uh, directly to the to the primary care the doctor or to the secondary care, uh, or maybe she, maybe the patient has had an abdominal cervical uh, smear. So what what we do? Let me let me just use the practice in the UK. Then we can then now uh, um, break it down to the uh, Nigerian. Uh, system. So, so I run a clinic, a clinic. So I get all the uh, patient with the abnormal smears. Um, so see them in the clinic, we consult them. Then we carry out an, investig an investigation, an examination called coposcopy. So we use uh, an instrument called co 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 coposcope, which is like a, um, a binocular, um, low, low powered magnifying binocular uh, microscope to have a look onto the cervix. So we put some, some solution onto the cervix. Uh, that's it, uh, we use acetic acid to have a look onto the cervix to see where the abnormality is actually. So, and then we take um, a biopsy uh, from the cervix. And, it, and then this sample is then sent to the lab for analysis. And then, they, then this will then confirm uh, the presence of uh, uh, cervical cancer. So like I said, because of the screening program that has been infected in, in the UK, so most of our patients are picked up at the pre malignant level. So there's what we call the cervical intraepithelial nucleus, and that's CIN. So we have CIN one, two, and three. So these are so these are the these are the stages in which uh, the abnormality goes through. These are the pre malignant changes before somebody actually have the cervical cancer. And the reason, the, the, the objective of the Savaka of the Savaka screening program is to pick women up before they develop cancer, Savaka cancer. So the pre so that the pre malignant uh, changes can be treated uh, before development of Savaka cancer. But assuming that that we pass that stage and then we made a diagnosis of Savaka cancer, 
So what we need to do, what the parties in the UK is to, um, uh, um, to request an MRI scan of the pelvis um, and abdomen, and also we do a chest X-ray uh, to check that it's not um, uh, spread to the, to the lungs. And then we will then discuss this case in the gynecological MDT. That is the multidisciplinary team meeting in which we have uh, doctors, uh, radiologists, pathologists, and the gynecologists and the gynae oncologists as well, and meeting together to work out a plan of management for the patient. So for the early, very, very early stages, this can be man managed in the, um, in the general hospital, uh, but if it's advanced cancer, uh, then that, that will refer to the, uh, to the gynecological center to be managed by the gynecological oncologist. So that's what happened in the, in the UK. So it's a multidisciplinary uh, team care. Thank you. Just before we go to the next, I just want us to answer a couple of questions from the public. So one is, uh, somebody is asked, at what age can a female develop uh, cervical cancer? That's the first question. Okay. The second question is, is there any need for screening after the vaccination? We can just answer that, then we'll go into the next. Uh, okay, thank uh, you. I think at what age? Uh, the screening in the, in the UK, uh, we, we start screening at the age of 25, and then we stop the screening at the age of 64, because the the the, the um, <clears throat> from the from 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 uh, studies is been shown that the risk of developing cancer uh, in a woman age 20, 25 years be, uh, age uh, less than 25 years is very very low. The risk is very very low, um, so. And that is why the screening program starts, we start screening from age 25. Um, so I'm not saying it's impossible, but the, uh, the risk is very, very, very low. Um, and also in, in very young, in young women, you have all these pre-malignant changes like CN1, which if you don't do anything about it, the body system fights itself and then it corrects itself. So you don't want to be doing, you, want, you don't want to be about treating women as well. I think that is why the um, screening program has fixed that age at 25 to start the, to start the program. And then once you add regular normal screens, then you can stop at 64. So that, that is the way it is. So I don't know whether I've answered that question or not. Okay, so yeah, I think you, you don't be honest. At what age can a female develop you know, cervical cancer? Obviously, um, it's, uh, it's, the... yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's very rare below age 25. But, but as for 25 years up to 64, um, I mean, and, uh, the, that, that can, that can, the, the woman can be affected with varying um, um, degree uh, in terms of incidents. I think another thing to note there is obviously, like the doctor said earlier on, uh, it takes about 10 years for you to develop, you know, but somebody being sexually active before the age of 15, then that's not, I mean, I don't think that's, uh, uh, well, it happens, but only very, very few people will probably do so, meaning that the exposure will be quite early. Uh, and it, we assume that the exposure is not earlier than 15 years, and then 10 years on top of that will take you to that 25. So yeah. usually, mm. each 25 yeah. is where you tend to start screening. Uh, place. Okay, so is there any need for screening after the vaccination? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think they, it has to be a joint um, effort in terms of, so even after the HPV vaccination, we still encourage women to go for, uh, to go for screening. Um, so in the UK, uh, as an example, we start screening from the age of 25. So from the age of 25 to 49 years of age, so we, are, we screen women every three, three years. And then once they turn 50, then we change the, uh, the frequency to every five years up to the year of 64. So that's, the, that's what we do in the UK. And um, it's been very, very successful um, to, the, to the fact that um, at least it's, it has reduced uh, the mortality of women. At, I think 5,000, um, it has reduced the, 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 the deaths from 5,000 5, women every year that would have died if there was no uh, national screening. So 5,000 women lives are saved because of uh, the NHS uh, national screening uh, program. So this is this is this is a success in it uh, uh, in uh, of, sort of the screening program. Thank you so much. So now, um, obviously, we're in Nigeria. Uh, we're majority of our uh, of our followers today they're in Nigeria, and people will be asking the question. Okay, so you're talking about UK. You're talking about UK. What can we do in Nigeria? So 
um, where I'm going to ask for Dr. Uh, Ajay's own uh, suggestion, advice to our followers, what they need to do um, before we round up uh, this program. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that uh, question. Just, I just want, I just want to, um, you know, when we're talking about the treatment, um, I didn't really. I just mentioned the MDT. So just to mention that uh, treatment can be surgical in terms of um, maybe uh, removing, um, uh, doing, uh, removing parts of the uh, of the cervix that the cancer has affected. If it's very very early stage, that can be done. If it's a microscopic disease, um, doing a loop excision, like we call it, using um, an instrument to remove that part of the uh, abnormality, maybe all is needed. At times you can have to remove the uterus, which is, which is a hysterectomy. Um, if the disease has spread or is more, is, um, it, 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 is, if there's a larger area involved, then um, we have to have a radiation treatment. That's the reason therapy and also add, or additional with uh, chemotherapy. So I just wanted to add that to the, to the answer, to the question, to the, what, I, what I said last time. So coming to your question, now what can we do in Nigeria? There's a lot we can do. Um, actually, I saw this uh, data uh, from one of the papers I read that the incidence of uh, cervical cancer in Nigeria, the, this is a paper from 2013, it said it's about 18.8% per 100,000 of women age, from the age 20 to 24 in Nigeria. 18.8 per 100,000 of women age 20 to 24. And then the then this is now goes up to 373.8, 373.8 per 100,000 women at the age of 60 to 64. So you can see the you can see so in Nigeria, um, that age 60 to 64 is a very high risk age. You can see the uh, the way the, the from 18.8 to 373.8. So um, is a is a big is a big health uh, issue in Nigeria, and this is because. Um, uh, without going on and on about it, because of the lack of a uh, national screening program, um, talking about the facilities um, is very, very limited. Um, and also patient awareness of, patient awareness of their symptoms. Um, I think the uh, women back home, I mean, they got a lot on their mind, got a lot on their plates. Uh, so they may not really, uh, um, um, reports symptoms early, and then for people that report early, uh, for, for people that report at all, they are coming very late. In which this that this has gone um, as spread, whereby we did, um, um, making the prognosis to be to be to not, not not to be good. Uh, so these are things that we need to look at, and also the, the resource issues. I think they they uh, that's where our government needs to come in to help in terms of um, being uh, that political will. Um, there's a, there's a study from India about the use of uh, HPV vaccine, and they they shown tremendous um, uh, decrease in the incidence of cervical cancer with just one dose of HPV vaccine. I'm thinking that if government can sp can spend some resources to procure HPV vaccine and then start giving the um, so the HPV vaccine will be will be administered to to girls age um, from 11 um, to 12 years of age. So that is that's the target range in which you start vaccinating these girls, and then uh, over the over over the course. So once they so the full dose is the three dose, or the two dose, or the even one dose has been found to be effective in reducing the incidence of cervical cancer. So uh, so our government can target this because we do know that of the, the strong link with HPV and the cervical cancer. So if they can give the HPV vaccine, that is that is if, if, that is very very. If you can invest in this, that that would be fantastic. And then also the cervical screening program. Also, I don't think we, we, we can we should give up on that. I think we can still there, there can still be if there's a political will to do it. Um, having a form of a national screening program can can help. Uh, but I think the vaccination is very very key because we'll be successful in vaccinating other uh, infectious diseases like hepatitis B um, uh, in Nigeria. The malaria program has been very very successful. Even HIV programs are very, very successful. So I think we should be advocate for women's health in, pro, in promoting, in putting pressure um, and alighting that this also should be part of the national screening program in Nigeria. Thank you so much for that. Uh, quite a wonderful, uh, you know, suggestion and um, yeah. 
Uh, before I round up now, I just want to take this question, which just came in again. Does uh, the use of condom reduce the risk of cervical cancer? I will, um, I've not read a paper or study on it, but I will, I will look at it from this way that um, if the using condoms will reduce the risk of getting HPV, yeah. then, then, then definitely that would then reduce the risk of having um, pre-malignant changes, which would then lead to cancer. So I think definitely it will, we've talked about is that safe sex um, is one of the uh, preventive Great. measures, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ajay. So it's Sorry, Dr. Gwen, can I just come in before you say you were running up? I just want to say about how the, um, in terms of, I just want to read some stats across to us in terms of the body of cervical cancer. So there are 530,000 new cases every year, 530,000 new cases every year. And over 85% of the incidents um, uh, and the mortality um, occurs, occurs in low resource country. And the, what we call the developing countries. So we have 530,000 cases, new cases of cervical cancer every year. And worldwide, uh, cervical cancer is the fourth uh, commonest cancer in women. Uh, followed the, so this is uh, following breast, colorectal cancer, and lung cancer. So cervical cancer, is, cancer is, the, is the fourth. Where, and also in some countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, in, in Sub-Saharan -Sub Africa and parts of South, Africa, South America, actually is the most, is the leading uh, cancer among women. So I don't know about Nigerian statistics, but I think in some parts of Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa is actually the, 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 the leading, the commonest cause of cancer. And then we have 273,000 deaths every year, 273,000, 273,000 deaths every year. That means that for every two minutes that we, that we spend, every two minutes, a woman dies every two minutes of cervical cancer. So since we've been on the air now, unfortunately about 15 women have died of cervical cancer somewhere in the world. I'm thinking that we should all be advocate of women's health. We should, I think the, the, the issue of cervical cancer should be on the, on the public agenda, on the public radar. We should all be, uh, we should all be uh, advocate of women's health. We should push this agenda uh, we talked about HPV vaccine, the uh, um, national uh, screening program. I don't see why we can't have this in Nigeria because we've, we've got resources. We, 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 we can do it if there's a way. I believe that if there's a will, there's a way. And that is what, and I appreciate what you are doing um, with monitor your health. I'm sure that there are people out there uh, listening um, who got uh, the, the, the ears of the, uh, of, the, of the government. I think we should think about it because uh, when we save, when a woman, when one woman is saved, uh, the family uh, is saved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. So that's um, because of the time. There are so many questions coming in again, but uh, because of the time, uh, we only have a few minutes, you know, to round up. We might not be able to answer all the questions, but the, for those questions, we will answer them online. And what I want to advise our, our viewers is, you know, um, that, that there will be more of this coming. If you have your question, you can send them ahead of time so that we can wrap everything up during the, during the, uh, the program so that we don't linger on for too long. We, we're looking at maximum of 45 minutes for this program. And um, uh, on the basis of that, I really want to th thank you, Dr. Ajayi. And I want to seize the opportunity to talk to us, you know, uh, our ladies especially. Um, we've heard about, you know, cervical cancer today. It's a major, major issue. It's a big body even in Nigeria. A lot of ladies are dying. Breast cancer, cervical cancer, they are quite big killers of our ladies. Worse than we even have in, in England, in, in, our, in developed countries, purely because we do not have a national program that will screen our ladies, meaning that our ladies will present far too late. So in developed countries like in England, ladies will pre they, they present quite early because they're picking them through in the process of screening. Screening basically means that we check when there's no problem. Yeah. And then if you see any sign that the problem is coming, we pick it early. And yeah. the thing about cancer is that cells, one cell will become abnormal. 
then it becomes multiple and a lot of them before you see signs. So meaning that if we pick it early, we can actually take care of it. Like the doctor said earlier on, for pre-malignant phase, before it becomes too bad, when the cells start changing, if we pick it, we can actually treat it. Recently, we did a massive screening in the lorry, and then we we're able to pick, you know, ladies at the very early stage. We treated them on the spot. So the, the, the call to action here is for our lady. Try and take your own health by your own hand so mm -hmm. that you can actually, um, you know, protect yourself. Uh, there are there are opportunities if you if you want us to signpost you to directions where you can have your screening done, just leave messages on, on you know uh, on our platform. We will signpost you. We'll direct you. It doesn't matter where you are in Nigeria. There's always something going on somewhere. We know that COVID is ravaging our world now. COVID will come. COVID will go. Um, as long as we play safe as it stands. So I thank you so much for actually you know, taking time to stay with us all day today. And I hope that this, this program has been very, very informative and it's helped you in your thinking. And we pray or hope that you'll be able to take the little you've gained here to actually walk uh, your way around how to improve your own um, view of how you see your own health, especially in terms of this particular topic that we've talked about today. So tomorrow, we have another program that is coming up and we're hoping to be able to discuss, you know, uh, diabetes in children. Is it true that it happens? How does it happen? What, what can we do? How do we find out? How do we prevent it? And things like that. There's a whole lot of questions that we're gonna to answer tomorrow with an endocrinologist, a pediatrics endocrinologist that will be coming on board. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing you another time. Have a brilliant evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Gurami. Thank you. Thank you.